I do a lot of kinds of therapy with different people, but a lot of what I do is with trauma and attachment. I think as psychotherapists, we are privileged to use our whole selves to help our clients heal. We connect with them deeply, if we're doing it right, in my opinion. We use our detective brains to figure out what's happening. If you do EMDR or something else that works fast, it's amazing to just watch that trauma go away. The nightmares are gone. The negative cognitions clear out. And they get back to their lives. They say, they say things when they've done the work. I finally know it's over. I feel like me again. It wasn't my fault. I was just a kid when that happened, after they felt dirty or bad their whole lives. I don't think there is one good trauma therapy. I think there's a whole bunch, and it behooves us as clinicians to learn more than one modality to make it so that we have tools that fit the people that we're seeing. I just wrote a book about trauma therapies in general. And um, here is my opinion, but also the opinion of a lot of people, Dan Siegel included, a lot of the people who go and teach at his um, trauma and attachment conference every year at UCLA. And this is what I've gotten from that. In any therapy modality, you need to bring presence, the here and now of the body, of affect, and of thought. That includes getting clients into that window of tolerance. A lot of therapists talk about, Pat Ogden talks about this a lot. In order to do the therapy, if somebody is totally <gasps> traumatized, and flooded right in the moment, the therapy can't work. The part of their brain that can think is offline. If they are totally shut down, unable to connect, unable to feel, you also can't do the work. So in any therapy, getting that balance, getting that therapeutic window, and having a way to do that is extremely important. So then, then the work can move through them. EMDR talks about dual attention all the time. But as an EMDR therapist, I've noticed that dual attention is a part of every good trauma therapy. The clients need to be in two places at once. They must hold the trauma in mind, some kind of exposure or other, while maintaining focus in the here and now. In EMDR, the second attention that holds them in the room is the bilateral stimulation, which I'll talk about later. You're doing this, or you're tapping on the person, or they're getting tones in their ears, but it helps keep them in the room knowing it's now and whatever the trauma was is not happening right now even though it's in mind, it's in body, they're feeling it. In yoga and somatic work, it's really the focus on the body. You're here, you're moving or you're feeling it or you're grounding or whatever, and you can feel that, and you're focused on the sensation of now. Wow, that old bad stuff is coming through. In good relational analytic work, a lot of the new analytic work, the dual attention is the therapeutic relationship. And I think that's true in all good therapy. You are holding the person in the room by your connection. They know they are contained by you. 
and that works in EMDR too. But it it is, and probably any really truly good trauma therapist is using that therapeutic relationship to keep people present and engaged. In ego state work, anybody here do parts work? Ego state work sometimes, a part, some of that is inner child work. It's the current self, the adult self, that connects, that's the here and now adult, that connects with the distressed child, contains that child, brings that child up to now so that it's okay. The third important thing in all good trauma work, in my opinion, is affect, emotion, while in relationship. In trauma work that's working, clients have affective experiences while held in the relationship and inside that window of tolerance. And it's not necessarily the discharge of the affect, whatever Freud said. It might be, that, that can work, but it's that it is felt and not avoided and moved through. It's witnessed and survived, then transformed into a memory and no longer a developmental catastrophe. Myriad studies show that the strength of the therapeutic relationship is the strongest predictor of a good outcome in anything, whatever you're doing in therapy. Newer studies say it's not just the relationship. You can make people feel better by being nice to them. They have to have an affective experience about whatever it is in relationship and survive it. That is the key according to the newer studies. In good trauma therapy, clients gain tolerance and acceptance of their own affect, their own feelings, their own history, and their own capacity for relating to both themselves with compassion without the huge shame for being and feeling, and also that capacity to connect with others, and not just you, to be able to take that outside the therapy. And the next important part that the research is saying all over the place is they have to make meaning of the traumatic events. Meaning is, not, meaning is not enough. It doesn't make the trauma go away and be behind. But that is a part of any trauma therapy that's working. They often, in that final stage of therapy, when the meaning is arising, they get mad that whatever it is happened. They experience anger about it. That's a part of the healing. Damn it that that guy did it to me. I hate that I had that accident and it messed things up. You know, those bullies ruined my life for so long. Because as they're healing, they're realizing what they lost. Then the grief arises. And then the relief, but it's over. It's now, I get to be different. I get to do it differently. <sighs> And that is the gorgeous moment. And then they lay you off. 